I want to welcome everybody to another live marketing experiments web clinic. I'm actually standing in for Flint today. He's out sick, but uh, regardless, we've got a lot of great research that we want to talk with you about today, specifically two common mistakes in the microsite design process that can kill conversion rates at launch. And my goal at the end of this clinic, uh, after the 35 minutes that we have together, is to help you basically detect and destroy these two particular discoveries or mistakes in the microsites that you might be in the process of designing or launching or even ones that you've recently launched and you're trying to optimize. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with marketing experiments or you're new to uh, marketing experiments uh, web clinics, a little bit about me. I've actually uh, been with McLabs for about six plus years, uh, marketing experiments. And uh, I've actually had the privilege to oversee about 10% of our research library, which is, uh, it's been great. So uh, today I'm really excited to be able to share with you the case studies as well as some of my own personal experiences working directly with research partners on this particular topic. Also, please, as Dan had mentioned, join the conversation, hashtag web clinic. We have a whole team standing by just looking at what you're posting, any questions that you might have, and also um, use your GoToWebinar Q&A feature. That's how I can actually see the questions that you have and the comments that you have so that we could interact together as we go through this clinic. So without further ado, let's go right into the research, starting with a study from Marketing Sherpa. If you're unfamiliar with Marketing Sherpa, it's one of our sister companies and they conduct research uh, just right there on the front lines with marketers. And we surveyed marketers and we asked them about effectiveness of content. And if you could see on your screen, you've got a number of different content types, everything from webinars, web pages, case studies, to blogs and mobile web content. And when you would ask these marketers who are in the field, in the trenches, what is most effective, you kind of can get a sense from top to bottom. I want you to take a closer look at microsites. When you compare them to other pieces of content, they're rated at least somewhat effective, but they're not at the top of the list. And that begs me to ask why. Why is it that marketers find the performance of microsites adequate? Is there something that's going wrong? Is there something that's missing? Um, and microsites are always agreed upon as a great way to reach particular prospects, but why not do them more? We'd like to reveal to you two discoveries, recent discoveries, that will help us answer that question. In fact, um, we're going to go through two major experiments and then talk about two common mistakes. So let's start with the first experiment. This is a B2C golf community microsite. In this particular test, we are actually trying to, we're working with the research partner to increase the number of leads from a community microsite. Now this is a national land and home sales organizations for consumers. If you've ever bought new homes, if you ever bought uh, land to build, I mean, just think this is, this is the kind of situation that we're in and this is the story that these people have. They're going to the site and they're trying to make a decision. This is a tool to help them make that decision. Our question, which specific section of content that we're going to test will result in the largest amount of leads? So let's take a quick look. This is the uh, control. And as you can see, on the bottom right, we're focusing solely in this particular test on the messaging surrounding the call to action. So let's look at version A, okay? So this is one of the two things that we tested, version A. Get your free community name, whole by whole description. It was a call to action offering a PDF download of a whole by whole description of the course that was actually connected to the home community. Version B, the messaging around this call to action offered a PDF download of a scorecard specifically for the course connected to the home organization. So marketers, I'd like to ask you, um, I, bet I don't have internet. Okay, so, so uh, just letting you guys know, uh, we're working out some technical issues, so I can't actually see your comments or questions, but I want you right now to just look and see which one do you believe would be the winner, the whole-by-whole -whole description or the course scorecard? Let's have a look at the results. Version B saw a 69% decrease in conversions. This is the scorecard. So 
Here's the most important point. A substance change of a single important section completely, just completely destroyed the conversion rate, right? And this is, this is an organization that needs to talk to people in order to begin the process of uh, helping them see if this community is right for them. So what was wrong with version B, right? What was so wrong with the scorecard that, that made it uh, kind of a bad call to action, I guess you could say? Well, one of the most common mistakes that we find with microsites is that we're asking people too much too soon. We, we call that macro distortion. I kind of like to think of it this way. Ask a man with a messy garage to clean the garage. Is he going to clean it? Well, your conversion rate's probably going to be low. Why? I am one of those people. I just totally wouldn't clean. You, you can't lead me in that way. You got to give me baby steps, right? What if you said, hey, John, why don't you go organize your tools? I know, you li- I know you've been wanting to do that. Or, hey, John, why don't you, um, I know you want to put in some new cabinets. Baby steps, right? The reason why I'm not cleaning is because I haven't decided that I needed to clean it. So you've got to help somebody come to the conclusion, or better yet, do what my wife does. I, I, I was such a poor dresser, I probably <laughs> still am. Instead of telling me that I was a bad dresser, she would actually send me clothes and, and say, hey, look at this and these new clothes that I have for you. And I would eventually come to the conclusion that I needed to step it up, right? That's the same thing. As we have taught elsewhere, we've taught this at the Optimization Summit. We've also taught this in, in clinics past. You've, you need a value positive call to action, but it's not enough. You can't just have a call to action. You can't just go through the design process of a microsite and say, hey, we've got a call to action. We're good. Or, hey, this, let's, let's give them this thing. It's okay. This is one of those decisions that I find with research partners that it just, it's quick, it's, not, it's oftentimes not even thought of. Call to actions must be synchronized with the prospect's thought sequence. So this is what we've discovered. This wasn't just from one test. This is from a meta-analysis of all the microsite testing that we've done. And what we've discovered is that in, uh, performance increases specifically when you focus on process level value, specifically as it relates to A, or one, the next most immediate unanswered question in their mind, and two, something they believe will help them address it. So if you were watching last, uh, uh, last web clinic that we did, instead of saying upgrade now, see the upgrade price, right? Let's look at an example from the case study. The losing call to action performs poorly because it assumes that they're ready to play. It assumes that they want to experience the course in order to decide if this community is right for them. The winning treatment, however, it doesn't assume that they want to play, that they want to just jump right in and experience it. Instead, it actually offers them a description of how the course is built. And the interesting thing is that description, that point-by-point, whole-by-whole description helps them understand the value proposition as it's connected to the community of interest. This community doesn't just have a golf course. It has a really good golf course, uh, just for anonymization's sake, right? And they put in the claims and they put in the points of value. Now, what's another example? Here's from protocol ID TP1636, a generic invitation with added explanation. And you know what? It works. But what if the people visiting your microsite actually are farther along than you think they are? So what do we do? A connection to customers further in the decision process. How much does it cost? Gee, I want to know the answer to that question. 64% increase in conversions. So not only did we capture the people that weren't as far along, we captured the people that were. So again, it's not about rules, single call to actions, it's about connecting with your customers, correct? Here's another great example, and this is actually uh, kind of a follow-up test of the original. So on another page of these community sites, and this wasn't just one, this was many, we went from offering a guide that's focused solely on the surrounding community, okay, you're buying a new home, you want to know what's around the new home, to a guide that has that information and information about all the plots, all the different sections of land, so you can begin to see what's available, what's not, where you might want to sit in that. I remember when I was buying a home at some point, I just, I dwelled on that piece of information. I would rather have 
the, the call to action that sent me, you know, that got the 326% increase than just understanding what was around the community. This is what people needed to make a decision. And in every microsite, it's going to be slightly different. You can't assume that you know it. You have to discover it. You have to determine what it is that your customer is trying to get to. So with that, let's go to the second experiment. We talked about macro distortion. Now let's look at a B2B example of a medical research microsite. Some of you may be familiar with this case study, but you're not probably familiar with all of the details of it, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Physician-only social network allowing uh, medical product companies to conduct first-hand research on their potential purchasers. The goal of this site was to increase the number of product company leads uh, from the microsite. They wanted to connect with these people to help them understand all that they could do. And keep in mind, too, that this is a group of people who have a way of doing things. And this product, this way to research, is an entirely different way to do things. So it needs explanation. Let's take a look at version A. The original page is designed to connect the visitor with all the information that we thought, think that they might need in order to make a decision. One thing I do want to point out is that it does require the visitor to take mul multiple steps to get to the information. Okay, so here are the different pages, and there are a number of other pages that you can go to when you click these links. Now let me show you a second version. This was an alternative design, and it, it, was, it was still a microsite. This wasn't just a single page. And this design sought to integrate the majority of the information into a single page. So if you take a closer look, it's, it's very copy dense. It's long copy. And it integrated everything from the product info, as you could see in the tour, all the way down to the company info at the bottom. And then even then, if you wanted to get free reports to just kind of you know, see exactly what kind of research or findings this, this thing could produce, it would take you to a single page that consolidated all of those. So, you went, so you've got a full microsite and a very small microsite. Does anybody want to vote? How many people, version A, version B? I can actually see your comments now. I can see your comments now. Let's, we've got B, we've got B, okay. We've got a lot of Bs. We've got B from Melissa, from Tony. Got B, yo, from Sean, <laughs> okay. I've got an A, Thank, Eric thinks it's A. Okay, great. Um, we've got a B from Lisa. We've got version A from Stephanie. Yep, B from William, okay. So we've got, microsites. And, and I, I'm, I'm telling you, these aren't full-blown sites. These are just focused sections of a much larger site just made on its own. So what are the results? The version Bs have it 154% more. The change in the amount and sequence of content resulted in an increase, and here's the key, it didn't negatively affect SEO. Now, let me ask you this. What do you think was wrong with version A? Anybody want to give it a shot? Co audience, let me see what you think. Not focused, says Tony, okay? Busy, okay? We've got too cluttered, not, okay? We've got, uh, let's see, three columns, too many buttons. Uh, we've got too many places to look, okay? Too much for a microsite. Irrelevant headline, uh, too busy with many options, too much work to get the information, says Adam. Okay, one more, um, complex eye path, says Jeff. Very good. So let me ask you guys a question. Have you ever been, or do you ever, have you, have you known somebody that you like but don't necessarily like to talk to? I mean, I mean right? Can you think of a situation where there's definitely somebody you like but you, just, you, you try to avoid a conversation with them? Yes. Ashley says yes. Oh, God, yes. Well, uh, let me tell you, um, if you're that person, then you're a victim of what I would call conversational void. What is that? Well, the reason why we don't like talking to them is probably because they either talk too much or they talk too little or they're constantly hijacking the conversation and talking about different unrelated things or they're spaghettiing all over the place and you just can't keep up with it. In marketing, we do that on our web pages and um, it, it comes across in the form of the page that you just saw. One of the most common mistakes that I see in microsites and these are the ones that we've tested is the tendency to do an aesthetic or a focus that completely destroys 
the sustainable conversation. They might start out well. They might say, hi, my name is, or they might get them started, but they can't continue the conversation because they lose them. Either it's just too difficult, they're spaghettiing around, everything's equally weighted, or because they don't say enough about something, or maybe they're just talking too much about the thing that I don't care about, my, the news releases. What do I care? I want to understand if this is the right product for me, and if that helps me, great, but help me understand that. So what did our meta-analysis of microsites reveal? The most effective amount of content is a balance. And it's a balance necessary for the people coming to get enough clarity on what it is that you're offering and asking them to do and to believe it. I understand it, number one. Two, I believe it. So let's take a look at this page. Pages like this, to me, it's like sending somebody to get uh, a good dinner like at Golden Corral. They go in, they see a multitude of food choices, then they find out they're less than desirable. And I mean, that's, that's totally, totally, you know, it's in like, I'm never gonna do that again, right? Uh, yeah, I've had bad, <laughs> I'm not really, I don't really like restaurants like that, okay? This page kind of reminds me of that. You've got a lot of different buffet choices. They don't really, you know, they seem good, but when you get into them, they don't really taste great. And then you walk away feeling with like a stomach ache. It needs help. This is why I go to sit down restaurants. I get a menu. The server asks me what I want to drink, what I want to eat, because I know that if they mess up, they're accountable. Okay, there's under, yeah, I've totally had a hard life. <laughs> yeah, so, um, it's, it totally happens, right? The conversation in this design is sequenced and it's designed vertically. It's, the information is arranged in such a way that I could understand what's going on. And it happens to everybody. We get lost because we can't understand. We just, it's too hard, it's too difficult. And there are people that decide not to continue because of it. Now, am I saying that less content is better? I don't know. Let me share with you a case study. TP1901, this is, we haven't released this before, and um, actually this is, uh, I'd like, uh, this is an interesting one. We have a group, there's a, a, a company named PR Newswire, and they have a multitude of products and services. But they had a particular product for a set of prospects, specifically SMB, maybe bloggers, and they didn't want them to have to go through the whole membership process or the whole process you know, that's typical to start working with them and getting help on distributing their content. So they said, what if we created a microsite with, with, a specific, with one of our products that bypassed all of that? So what we have is iReach, an online low-cost DIY platform. And what they wanted to do is, is they had built the site and they wanted to increase the, pro increase the product engagement and orders because something Something just wasn't going right with it. So let's take a look at what iReach was doing. I mean, they were genuinely trying to connect with a group of prospects. We've got an entry page, which actually those three buttons are for three different products. And whenever you choose one of those, it takes you to the series of cart pages. Okay, you've got a you know, header. Uh, all the call to actions are above the fold. Um, but when we, act, when, you know, according to the individual test and nature-based data, what we found were visitors that had a lot of questions. They wanted to understand what the difference was between the products. They wanted to understand uh, more about the websites, right? They wanted to understand uh, what was going on. This is a single page site, then with cart pages and transactional pages. So the team at PR Newswire and iReach did a redesign, but they didn't just do a redesign. In the microsite design process, they decided, based off of the data, the amount of content, they anticipated this, before the cart pages that would be necessary to help these customers anticipate, just answer their questions, help them understand what the product was, who uses it, um, how to choose the right product of the three. And so they actually added pages to the process. What was the result? 31% more. 31% more people ordering. And in addition to that, 38% more revenue. So not only did they get more people to buy the product, but they got some people to spend a little bit more because they understood what was going on. And 
And it, this wasn't a boost in SEO because as you know, organic traffic takes a long time to build up. You know, you've got the search engines to index it, etc. 31% by adding pages. So what's the summary? Here are the two mistakes that I want you to look out for. Macro distortion, trying to ask somebody to clean the garage before they're ready, help them conclude that it's, oh, it's good to do that, and conversational void, just completely losing them um, with all of the different options or with too much or too little amount of information. It's always a balance. There's nothing sustainable. With that, I'd like to go into live optimization. We actually have a little bit more time to do some live optimization, and I'd like to get your help actually taking a look at these pages and optimizing them uh, for uh, the those who have submitted them. Let's take a look uh, really quick. Um, the team asked me to, to talk about this. Email Awards 2014. Uh, basically, you have a chance, if you uh, submit to the email awards, you have a chance to speak at the email summit coming up uh, early next year. So if you have an email you're particularly proud of or is actually performing really well and you want to see how it ranks up against others in the field, I encourage you, have fun, go for it, send it. And you may actually have a chance to speak and even if you don't want to speak, you know, it's, it's okay. Um, it's just something that you can do um, to engage with the community and learn a little bit more about how you're comparing to others and, and how it's doing. Uh, with that, let's go into some live optimization. Here we've got Open Text Glo Global. This was submitted by Shama, um, or Shama, I, I want to make sure I'm pronouncing your name right. Uh, and, and, and they tell us, we have a microsite with many third-party campaigns pushing contacts to the site, but once they get there, the conversions are low. Can you help us figure out why? I'd like to pull up the page, the full page, so everybody can see. So everybody, I'd like to get your help. We have two mistakes that we know people make, but there are probably many more that we can find. Um, team, let's actually, um, let's help them out. Let's get, the, uh, let's get the site on the screen. It should be visible now. Open text, virtual design center, deliver better designs faster. I'd like to see some feedback. Um, Tina asks, where's the form? There's only one option here, Nick says. Give more than one option, okay? Ardy uh, needs a headline that draws me in. Jeff, asking too soon. Um, Steven, better call to action. All right, what else? What else, audience? Get the white paper now, John. Huge header image. We've got be explicit about benefits. Uh, why do I need the PDF, says Max. Great question. I hope we can, let's, let's try and get an answer to that. What is the value prop, says Ashley. No pain connection, says Tony. So uh, no clear what is the white paper's value and tell me the benefits. Don't tell me I'm going to get it in the headline. Sean. So let's, I'm going to go ahead and take a quick look at this page. Let's scroll back up real quick. Now, assuming that you're sending... The one thing that I do want to note is that there's a lot of weight put on some of these, uh, you know, these uh, TLAs, these three-letter acronyms, these terminology. And hopefully the people that are coming to these pages understand what that terminology is. But regardless, to take a look, what I, the one thing that I see that is right or that has potential is the form. And what I mean by form, I don't mean fields. I mean the actual, um, you've got a headline. You've got a space for a headline. You've got a subheadline. You've got some intro copy. Um, and you've got three sections of content. It, again, it th equally, three equally weighted columns does not mean a loser. I've seen that in tests multiple times that you can make those into winners. There's a way. So let's scroll down a little bit. Um, what else is positive about this? I mean, you, okay, now they can continue to engage, right? But now let's talk about some of the things that they need help with. I agree with the audience. The headline, the, the greatest amount of changes that can help this is in the substance of the form. So specifically what the headline is saying, what the subheadline is saying, what the um, introductory copy is saying, virtual design center, what does that mean? What do I get? Get what when I do what? Just having a point first headline or just having a point. I think is going to really give you a good chance at capturing these visitors. And, and once you capture them, help them understand how they can digest the rest of the page. I agree with the audience that it's probably too soon to ask them to download a white paper. What's the white paper about? Well, maybe it's the benefits of consolidating. It doesn't necessarily 
makes sense because it looks like that's just part of the description copy. What about these three columns? How can I actually make them more effective? Well, I see what you're trying to do. You're trying to connect with a specific prospect type that's coming to these pages, but don't be so on the nose or direct about it. Attract them kind of like putting honey out for bees. Give them something that they want to know about. The engineering manager, is there some kind of fact? Is there some kind of piece of information or tool or configurator or something that they could look closer at? in order to help them in the next step, or the engineer, the IT. This is one thing that we did with a particular microsite for migraine headaches, is we attracted people at different stages of the process with information that they were looking for with the same exact form. Also, if you take a look at the images, the images don't necessarily help. They don't clarify. At this point, they're in the way. Do you, can you just take them out? Can you replace them with something that can help imply value? Those are the kind of things that I would look at and, and begin to test in order to get greater click-through and, and in order to actually get better conversions. And the last thing, let's just click on the download the white paper real quick and then we'll go to the next one. Let's click on that really quick. Let's just see what happens. Okay, please fill out the information below. Audience, what can this person do to help increase the expectation and value exchange here? They lied, Stephen said. I don't get... I, don't get, I didn't get the PDF. I have to fill out the information. I don't know I'm going to get the PDF. Remove the form. <laughs> Christian says, you know what? That's not a bad idea. Again, maybe you don't need the form. Maybe you can give away some content and then give them a reason to continue talking. Is there any significant impact if some of the information provides values located below the fold? Yeah, I mean, it's, the fold doesn't exist, okay? Um, all that exists is somebody's pre-existing knowledge or not. That's what drives, again, action. If they know a lot and they're just coming to continue, then yeah, having it sooner will help them. Otherwise, they're lost. Remind contact what they're getting. Submit button is weak. Great. Let's move on to the next one. Thank you, audience. I hope this was helpful. Um, let's take a look at the next page. I don't know if you can see it on your screen, but um, Carenza, submitted by Andrea. Primary objective here is email capture, and the primary audience, drivers in recent auto accidents. Uh, while you're looking at that, let's pull up the page. <laughs> Sean says clip art crime. Okay, uh, okay audience, let's, let's help Andrea out. What can, we, what can Andrea do to increase the force potential of this page? Is there anything that she can do relative to what we talked about today? Is there anything else that, that she's missing? Okay, we've got a real image, says Christian. Subheadline, says Dave. Uh, we've got clip art is too distracting, says Hans. Too much text in the intro text, uh, Princely. Uh, make, it a po make it a positive, Kirk says. Graphics is taking all my attention, says Max. This is not a headline. Um, no trust indicator, says Nick. Very good. Uh, let's scroll down really quick so they can begin to see. Um, next steps, understanding your rights, recent news. Uh, I don't know what it is about news that, that we love the, the, pro, the pro, you know, the post, maybe it's SEO or something, but it doesn't help me. Um, so let's scroll back up real quick. So let's think about the, the person coming to this page. What's their story? Do people typically search to know about car accidents before or after they've been in an accident? Right. This could be a serious situation, but the copy on this page and the whole substance focuses almost on the prevention of when really people might be coming here after they've been in a terrible situation. One of the difficult deal things to deal with is if you have been in a car accident, not knowing what to do or how to protect yourself adds to stress. People don't typically think about their health until it's in danger. So we've got a headline, we've got subheadline. How can we increase, how can we make that better? What if we actually took the 10 things that they could do to either um, that they should have done after the accident or they should teach somebody in the headline. Actually, if you guys, let's click on one of the, um, let's click on one of the next steps, no more. Okay, let's click on that. And let's talk about the image while we're waiting for that. The image doesn't set a context, especially the seriousness. It almost kind of plays it like a joke, right? And the plus signs don't necessarily, you know, it doesn't necessarily correlate. What if you showed a situation where people weren't hurt, but were in an accident, and you put plus signs by the things, um, like for example, a plus sign by the person sitting on the ground, if you've been injured, you know, sitting on the curb, or a plus sign next to somebody who's got their insurance out. 
you know, this is what you need to know about insurance. Or what if you just sent them to this page? <laughs> what if you just sent them to this page? This is information, regardless of how it's written, even though the headline may appear weak and the subheadline may ask a question, it still has more appeal than the page I was just on. It still has more appeal. It still captures me and engages me more so because it's given me something I want to know, either after the fact or before. Whereas on the first page, I actually have to click to figure that out. So that's the thing that I would focus on. I would test bringing some of that content, more of it up front, so that you can actually create that conversation and sustain it. Whereas right now, you've pretty much lost them at the clip art. You probably have some high motivation people, but um, even the design of the site begs to question some of the credibility of the information, whereas if you see it on this version, it actually looks more credible, at least to me. So, and we don't know the search terms or how people arrive to the site, so we've got to be fair. Uh, let's go to another uh, version, everyone. Okay, now uh, the next live op is, it's coming up on your screen now, Intermech. And this was submitted by Heather. Heather, let's try and we're going to try and help you out. The primary objective is to prompt visitors to watch a video. <laughs> Sean says, oh boy. Okay, well, well let's, let's, let's help Heather out, okay? She wants people to watch a video, maybe because the video increases their likelihood of doing some behavior. Maybe that, uh, we don't know. But let's just help her. Let's just really help her. Uh, let's look, take a look at the audience. Uh, Max says, where do I go? Princely, whoa. Dave, the graphic is tragic. <laughs> Christian, lo losing a lot of space. Okay, uh, what else? Don, too much color. Uh, Matthew, white on blue is impossible to read. So, Heather, right away, apart from the substance of the things that you're saying, people are distracted by the way you're saying it. Um, I know there's some kind of a flash play there with everything lining up. Uh, that's really, you know, the first thing that people see is watch video. They're not sure what it's about. Then they see kind of products down there. They're not sure how that connects. So really here, people can't pay attention to what you're saying because of the way it's being said. Um, you know, just having a headline, a subheadline, intro copy may help. Or even how, does, how do the video sites do it? They start with a headline, they set the context, and they show you that there's a video, and they might even give you a screen capture of one of the most interesting parts of the video. Again, they're starting a conversation, they're building a problem, they're leading you in. It looks like there's potential here, um, you know, with the, um, the uh, 88 to 99% increase in the accuracy jump, lead off with that. Headline that starts off with that. I think headline, how to increase packing from 88 to 98, 90% says Kirk. Good job, Kirk. I, I would test that too, okay? Lead them into it. Also, one other thing I might suggest, we've been seeing some recently, uh, I'm, I don't know the vendor, but there are some video types where it's not just video, but it's actually a combination of what appears to be drawing, um, transitions, kind of a building of a message the video type may actually help them engage into the content as well. So I would suggest just starting over and actually constructing a conversation and give them a reason to come into the video. Oftentimes when you lead with a video, you really have a hard time because of the friction potential, especially, I mean, this is B2B. I'm imagining these are people at work. Um, maybe they're in, they probably don't have as much time. Help them conclude that it's worth their time. Present it like it's valuable. All right, um, and it looks like we are out of time. Uh, audience, I want to thank you for your help and participation in this uh, web clinic. I think you guys are you're, you're doing well. Again, watch out for those two mistakes. Don't just put a call to action out there, and don't just say we're going to have a lot or a little content. Find what's right to connect with the customer and to help them come to a conclusion. Um, finally, for those of you that are interested in becoming a research partner, just fill out the form afterwards. Uh, it's a great way uh, for us to continue building the research, and it's a great way for uh, partners actually to, to find benefit from the process and learn a methodology. Uh, I've really enjoyed working with partners, and um, it's, it's great. So there you have it. Thank you, everybody, for your time today. Um, please let us know how we've done, and we look forward to seeing you to the next clinic.